Hey guys, this is Hell Hades. This is a Raid Shadow Legends video. Guys, we're coming onto the test server to try out the new Fusion Champion. Yeah, we was playing around with him on the stream last night. Actually, really cool. If you want to see some of the other new champions tested on stream, then you can actually go and watch my VOD from last night and you'll see the new legendaries and a few of the new epics as well. But this video is going to be a guide about the new legendary Totora Rhymehide. Um, and honestly, I think he's an amazing fusion. Like if, if there's ever one, I'm like, yes, go and get this one. If you've got the means to do it, you should do it. I can't really think of any type of account that wouldn't benefit from this guy. So for me, best one since Brogni. Up there with that kind of like Herndig quality of champion, Brago quality of champion uh, in the game. So for me, it's a must get if you can get him. Let's get into this. So here he is, the beast, Totora Rhymehide. I mean, I just feel like he's such a sweet looking champ. He is massive. He kind of takes up the whole screen uh, in places. But you know what? I, I just think he's, he's so well designed. I love, more than anything, I kind of love the, um, the wings. You know, this kind of like armor plating wing that he's got going on. The face. I'm not sure about the kind of crazy horns and stuff. But you know what? It looks cool. It looks cool. High elf champion. Spirit affinity. Uh, let's just talk about what he does then. So decrease accuracy A1. It's an okay A1. You know, for something like, a, I guess, a bomb all fight is where we'd mainly use decrease accuracy or, or just generally Doom Tower type of hits where you're going for resistance builds. I think we might see a bit more decrease accuracy, high resistance coming out in Hydra in the future. But it's an okay A1 that could kind of just get a bit of value anywhere in the game. The A2 is big, well worth booking down. Um, I'll tell you what, before I say that, nine books. Nine books, Plarium, yes. This is what fusion should be like. Quality kit, nine books, accessible. Um, so this is definitely the type of thing we want to see. So yeah, two books into here gives you a three-turn cooldown on block debuffs and increased defense going on for two turns. Makes it really, really viable for clan boss. Super good for pretty much all of the Doom Tower bosses, with the exception of maybe one or two. Um, Incredibly good for any of the general dungeons. Yeah, faction wars. It's just a great, uh, great skill. I guess there's, there's champions out there that do it already, but just this two turns block debuffs, I love it. This is a great ability. Three turn cooldown. And then this, I mean, we were playing around with this on stream last night. I love this ability. <laughs> I love it. So it's an AoE. Puts perfect veil on, on your team, which means that all of the focus becomes on the lion, yeah, and puts a shield on him for the amount of damage that he does. 20% of the damage he does. So the more people you're hitting, the bigger the shield can become. Um, I mean, basically what I was saying on stream is, if this hits, this makes him a great champion because big shield, all of the damage on him, allows everyone else to do their stuff. And I tell you now, it hits. And we'll try that in a minute. But yeah, this is a great ability. I love it. I absolutely love it. Four turn cooldown on this one. And then he's got this passive, which I wasn't too sure about. The more I've used him, the more I actually kind of like it. So when attacked, reflects 30% of the damage back to the attacker. He's a defense unit. And you can build him tanky. He's got good base defense and base HP. So you can actually build him to be a pretty good tank unit. Therefore, reflecting 30% of the damage that he receives can actually be a nuke to the attacker in the arena as like a defensive unit. Uh, and it will do a bit of work in waves, not a lot of work. But adding this 30% chance to freeze on the attacker actually be becomes quite clutch. Bearing in mind on the A3, all of the, the focus is on him. So it will take a hit, chance to freeze. Take a hit, chance to freeze. Which means when these veils drop off, there's a good chance that you know a third of the enemy are going to be frozen. So it's actually a kind of okay passive. It's not crazy reflect damage like you'd get from like a Brogni, but it's uh, it's more like a War Chief reflect. This dude's going to be annoying when we start seeing him in waves of content that we're trying to beat up. When they start throwing him into Doom Tower waves, we'd be like that. Not Totora! Literally nuking us down with our own damage. So this, this passive is interesting. Um, and then he's got a defense in Doom Tower aura, which is not bad. So... What have I done? Initially, we've just gone, got to go full damage, damage test, so I can show you what his A3 is like. Um, 
And I do feel like you build him with damage. Like you want the A3 to give you big shields. So I've gone Savage and Crit Damage Gear. Um, let me just show you his stats. Now, for the sake of the start of this video, some people hate it, some people love it. I'm doing it anyway. For the sake of the start, I'm doing a damage test. And I've put him in probably pretty unrealistic gear for most people. Okay? Crazy high defense. 5.8k. Very high crit damage. 255. A fairly slow build. And I've not really concentrated on anything other than that. Just damage. But you'll notice, because he's got a high base HP, he actually gets to a good level of HP without me even trying to build it. That's, that's kind of where he gets to. Um, and when, in terms of masteries, I've put Helm Smasher on him. I've put a sort of standard damage set of masteries on him for the damage test. Okay, We can do a more realistic build in a minute. Don't worry, all of those naysayers. Don't worry. We'll do that. But for the damage test, I always go into Dragon. Uh, I go into 20 if it's any other affinity but for spirit i'll drop back to 19 or we could do 21 um and we'll get a look at what he can do i also tested this guy last night he's so broken <laughs> so busted okay so usual tests then but apart from arbiter we're putting cp in for the increased defense you know what none of this is required it's just my testing group like this could be doom screech i showed him with the marquez video uh the other day so that definitely works here increased defense and turn meter probably better than cp for it honestly um, just my see if he's built. Decreased defense and weaken here is could just be any decreased defense champion. Yeah, so you do want decreased defense out if you want to try and get him to do damage, because obviously you'll do more damage. Uh, if you get weakened out there as well, you do more damage. Yeah, it's just the way it works. So we put our increased defense up. That's how his damage scales. Drop their defense and weaken them. Um, we put poison on us, gives us a bad L passive. We put poison on us from this one, more passive damage, and then I just look at the animation to this dude as well, but look at the damage that we do here. So this is, you've got, you got like a Marquez I showed the other day. She was doing about 220k and she's like top three defensive nuka in the game. So this guy comes in and sweeps a big old. It's basically between 150 and 250k damage. But when he does it, he pops himself a big old shield. And that's really what, what's more interesting is because of the way the ability goes, it's not just a damage. I mean, that's a hit. Yeah, that's a smack. And that's what we want to see from our fusions. But he's also got a kit that backs it up. So yeah, Solus is still the king of damage for a defensive champion. He's not better than Solus. Um, but he's up there as one of the best. He's up there with that kind of Ignatius level damage. Um, yeah, Marquez level damage. Like He's up there as a top defensive damage dealer even here we're about to see no decreased defense none of all the crazy shenanigans going on and he's popping 100k on his a1 sitting someone down so good multipliers around this whole kit and obviously he's, that's not his role he's not the damage dealer but look at his shield here no decreased defense only hit two champions give himself a lovely fat shield to play around with so this guy is awesome he's going to be viable for the early game player everywhere yeah and for the late game player he'll definitely feature in teams he'll be featuring in at least doom tower and uh, hydra and faction wars at least but i think i mean i show him because he's in this build just in the arena quick and you're trying to get a sense of what you can do here um we go for this because of affinity he is weak affinity to magic and magic obviously has got quite a, a big dominance in the arena but if we was to go with uh, let's just make sure that we actually get a turn here so i'll pull on my fast timer um i want my increased defense so she needs to be out there maybe these are tanks this is a tanky team massive team power we have to bring a high accuracy madame here uh we'll go with this one but yeah this is this is a tough team to beat up, honestly. You know, a massively high resistance tank team. So normally my Kaima would be like, take a nap. I'd imagine it won't land. Yeah, it didn't land on a couple. And now they've got this kind of res that can't go away. But we can drop their defense. We can still make them take a nap. I guess her. And then we can get a nuke away. So we've got increased defense on. We've got decreased defense on three of them, not on this dude. Bear that in mind. 
and let's slow it down, see what we do. Increased defense, decreased defense on them, and Mountain King, have a rest, my friend. Uh, even with the die without the decreased defense, pretty much one shot. This dude, I guess, was in reaction gear. I'm not seeing much damage there. I didn't see what happened. Then obviously I reset and we go again. So he's not going to be, I don't think I'm going to see, we're going to see him in plat level arena damage nuker type of thing, but he's definitely viable as a nuker. Bear in mind, I've got him stacked in gear here. Yeah, this is high level gear. Look at that, 100k across the board. How are you feeling, fellas? Pretty dead is how you're feeling. He can do that job. The other cool thing is, let me just, let me just take a hit on purpose from a big boy, Trunda. Let's see if I can find someone who's got a nuke here. I don't, I don't know who everyone is, honestly. Um, Trunders, Trunders, come on. Or maybe a times four candy. He's got to do some damage, right? Times four candy. I just want to see if his ref what his reflect damage actually does here. Like how, how bad is it? The thing with reflect damage is you mitigate the damage first through your defense. And then you give a 30% reflect back. That's the weakness of it. That's why it's not super strong and why it's not kind of considered meta. Is because, honestly, you mitigate so much of the damage yourself. Uh, let's just slow it down. That you don't really pass back enough. That's the trouble. So, you know, it's, it's okay. And we're still, are we still nuking? Let them have a turn. Let Candy have a hit. So we reflected nothing because of his shield. So because he's hitting shield, not health. We reflect literally zero. Yeah, you see how this kind of is a little bit counterintuitive for arena for this type of reflect business, which is really where you would want it. Um, so let's play out and see if Candy does give us a smack. He's not done his AOE yet. Unless I missed it. Right, we've got no shield. Oh, mate, no, we did still have a shield. It must have put the shield back up. I mean, yeah, he's just popping people. Um, I guess let me just try one more thing. Let me just manual it against that same team. Let's put him in there on his, on his own. So you can just kind of get a proper feel for what I mean here. So we've got no shield. He barely scratches himself 8k of damage. 400 damage. Candy smacks. You know what I mean? It's like it's barely tickling back. Barely, barely a tickle, unfortunately. So it's, um, that's not, that's not his strength. When you get to, I, I guess I'll switch, I'll switch this build out and we'll start to put him in some, some content and you can kind of see where the passive starts to actually give us some benefit. So just a little bit of a change. I've put him with an accuracy banner on now so that he's going to land things like his decreased accuracy and his freeze. Uh, they're the only things that require accuracy though. So I do wonder if, if people just will build no accuracy at all in his kit. The freeze, though, is nice. Like, when you get the freeze, it, certainly if you're building for something like Doom Tower, going through waves, the freeze is actually really nice. If you're building him to kind of tank up Spider, the freeze is nice. If you're not, and he's just kind of out there to do damage, maybe Clan Boss type of stuff, take the accuracy out of his build completely. And you actually just build him full damage. Full damage, because his damage is also his survivability. So. Um, I think accuracy is a bit of a luxury on him, depending on how you're going to use him. I've kept his masteries the same for now. Oh, didn't mean to do that. I kept his masteries the same because unless I'm using him in clan boss, Hydra, or Doom Tower bosses, I think I take Helm Smasher. Maybe if he's more of a, I don't know. The more you use him in bosses, the more likely you're going to put War Master on him because you get the extra tick damage from War Master, but. If you're using him in a lot of wave-based content, I think Helm Smash is the way to go. You definitely could um, just change it up. If you're very early game, you might end up taking Support Tree for the accuracy, honestly, and the increased shield. But I think you probably would just take an almost fairly standard Clan Boss build like this. I mean, maybe you'd either go down here like this, Retribution to get that A1 away a bit more, more defense, more survivability or you would go um into increased shields that he casts by himself 
um, perhaps ending up somewhere like lasting gifts to give um, a better chance of more increased defense, more um, block debuffs, you know, extending the turns. Um, if you were not kind of speed tuning him, let, let's say uh, we were kind of going for, yeah, I'd say more like a clan boss style build. I would do this, this, probably this, and then kind of coming down here, something like this, so that we'd kind of get back to our, um, so we get our shields stronger and we kind of keep our team alive better. That's kind of what you're looking to do. Uh, if you're not using them in clan boss, then you don't need to worry about speed tuning. So you might take rapid response here and get a more turn meter as well. So there's, there's a lot of options actually on him. There's a lot of things you could do, but this is a type of build I think I would run outside of being a nuka, outside of being a kind of heavy damage dealer, or if you're going like dungeons 21 to 25. Uh, I think I would take this to try and get back to his um, A3 faster. And because we know we're going to do damage, maybe I would take Blood Shield as well to get a shield. So this is the type of build I would go if I was using him outside of just doing straight up damage. But I still would take this type of stats. So we're, we're talking high defense, good speed, high crit rate, ideally 100, good crit damage, and accuracy if you want it, up to you. So let's throw him into a spider fight um, and kind of just see the benefit he's going to bring us on spider. So I'm thinking this kind of team, I'm, I'm looking at 20 here. We've got burns, we've got freezes, we've got um, decreased attack and defense, we've got turn meter control. You see here in terms of affinity, these two become the affinity tanks, but he will tank some of that damage because he's going to veil those champions. So the way this should work, is we get our, our buffs out we get our hp burn out there one thing i would say is like i've got him built to do damage here so you see he hurts the spiderlings quite a lot if you were building him as like a full spider tank he gets the benefit of this massive shield he's tanking it all up but also they've probably taken a bit too much damage so th the balance is the massive shield versus hitting them too hard because actually you want the burns to do the damage rather than him to do the damage and the harder you hit them the uh the faster they fall type of thing so this type of build gets better the higher you get up in spider honestly but this massive shield just means he can tank it up all day until they start to flip their focus and then there's kind of like this spread of damage between a couple of the team and eventually he'll cycle back round to his a3 at which point he'll fail everyone again and you just kind of rinse and repeat the set so i mean yeah this is a powerful team but i mean it's it's what one uncommon three epics and then this boy coming in honestly doing a ton of the work he's doing a ton of the work it's taken what one minute 20 before anyone's taken any damage really because he shielded all of that work early on and achak is doing uh his boss moves here don't forget as well, when they're attacking him, there is that chance that they freeze, which works well with Achax, turn me to boost, yeah? Chance of them freezing as well. There's one, see that? Freeze has gone on. Also means that when they burn next time, they just burn. They don't move, they just burn, and they burn everyone else. So this type of comp becomes insanely strong, and he is really good in this role, really good. Um, and if I was to throw this, I guess I'll throw it onto a higher level. So, I mean, that's, we never, we're never in any threat whatsoever. And he's done a ton of the work there. If we were to throw this on a higher level, I guess 25, he becomes a negative affinity. Um, my armor might end up being targeted, actually. Let me just check. Yeah, so one watch out. You, you want to make sure that whoever you want to be your tank has got the lowest HP. So one of the things here, my armor was, was had massive defense, low HP. So all I've done is I've put HP stuff onto Armager because this guy's got a, a high base. Therefore, it's quite hard to make sure that he becomes the tank. But I think I've done it here. So uh, in terms of affinity, in fact, let me just check the stag as well. Yeah, he's got tons. Okay, so in terms of affinity, negative affinity will target your champ. Um, but then it will look for the lowest HP champion as the, the target. Um, unless there's some buffs that come into play. And there might be with this because we've got increased defense and stuff like that going on. But he should be the main target 
even when his Veil's not out there. But when his Veil is out there, obviously he's 100% going to be the main target. So the main thing here is basically what we've just seen. I guess Armored is actually a bad choice. He's not going to drop much turn meter. But you'll see the Spiderlings will just attack this dude. It's even stronger at this point because these are tougher now. So they're not going to take the hits like they did in that last level. See this massive shield. He's literally like that. Whatever. I don't care. You're not going to eat up my shield. There's no way that's the way I die. The only way I'm dying potentially is this big boy spider doing work. Spiderlings are not a threat. So all we're trying to do is keep the, the main spider's attack down and try and control his turn meter as best we can whilst letting everyone else burn themselves to death. And so far, so good. So he's taken one turn. If I had better turn meter control going on here, then this would already be a wrap. Like it would already be game over. Unfortunately, my armor is just weak hitting it every single time. Big old shield. Look at that shield. Hmm. Love it. Love this guy's kit. He's just so good for general content. I love it. And, I mean, this now, we're just waiting on the burns to come back. Once the burns are back, it's game over. The spider's 100% dead. Decrease accuracy is kind of like a nothing thing here. I guess it might help you in Ice Golem, um, perhaps in Dragon, in terms of just like making sure those debuffs don't come back at you. Ice Golem especially, I'd say, where you get some real benefit. Armaga was low there, which is why he started to target Armaga. Maybe it's this block buffs, block debuffs, actually. Not sure. But anyway. The spider is pretty damn dead. And that is Spider 25 in a reasonable time with a pretty accessible team, I think. They're, they're all relatively well geared, honestly. But he is doing a ton of the work to make that happen. He really is. That is a lot of the work between him and Achak there is being done. So the spider, he's going to be brilliant. Literally like top tier. He's going to be awesome in Ice Golem. I guess we show Ice Golem as well. For this one, I'm going to give you a little sneak glimpse of this new dude. Just because of how busted he is. <laughs> He's so ridiculous. So we get our drop defense out there. Yes. We get our seal stunning stuff up. Loads of damage. Big shield. Protect my team. And then this dude. Uh, I mean, they're not even going to get a turn, but... <laughs> I will do a separate video on him because he's so ridiculously crazy. Like his A1 is just popping off all the time. Um, but you see here, I mean, maybe I've got too much control to even show this team off, really. But we're basically just locking people down. And then when we kind of need to, we then switch to getting the AoE hit out and, and kind of controlling where the damage is going to go, which is just so nice. So watch as they get a turn. Pop. You're not having a turn, my friend. So crazy. And I guess this is the part where he adds a bit more benefit, or a bit more value. So he's going to put out the block debuffs. Increased defense. So that's really important against this boss, you know, being able to control some of that damage coming at you. Not being frozen up all the time. And then everyone else is going to do the job. So... And obviously, he also just hits hard, yeah? And if, if you're going to take a big smack, he's going to put a big shield out as well. It's just generally a pretty freaking awesome kit. So for any of the kind of dungeons, I'd say Fire Knight is a little bit weaker because he doesn't have any multi-hits. He's still not weak. He's still not weak for Fire Knight. Like, he's still bringing a load of team support for Fire Knight. He just doesn't really do anything special for the boss that's going to help you out that much. See that? I mean, it's just like, whatever. I, don't, I couldn't care less. About what you're going to do to me. Flex a little bit of damage. Kind of whatever. Um, and then he's throwing decrease accuracy on the side mobs as well. It's just generally strong. So all of the dungeons, I'd say, except Finite, decent. Um, but I think where he's really going to shine is for the newer content in the game. So let's assume then we're, we're up higher in Doom Tower. I just picked, literally picked a random floor. 93. When you get past floor 50 on hard Doom Tower... The waves get incredibly difficult to deal with. If you don't have a seer comp blowing everything up, then it becomes very difficult to deal with these waves. And you pretty much have to crowd control them and you know, find other ways to get your damage away. 
But with this guy on the team, I feel like he just offers you a lot. First, he offers you a good chunk of damage. Yeah. Secondly, he's giving you an, a massive defense aura, 34%. He's giving you increased defense for the whole, for pretty much all of the fight. He's giving you block debuffs to try and deal with the debuffs coming at you. Um, and as long as you've got someone like a seal in your team that's going to throw out the stuns, someone like a ninja for freezing, you know, someone, other people in the team that are going to do some of the crowd control, I feel like we just deal with it. Um, Seal's gone a little bit low. Come on, Seal. Sort your life out. But, you know, he's empowering someone like a Seal of the Drakes with that increased defense. I feel like at this type of level, which is hard, you know, this, this is really tough when you get to this stage of Doom Tower. Generally, a lot of people would just be manual in at this sort of stage because it, it really does get tough. And, you know, you, you're kind of relying on things like HP burns. You see, we've got a protection here for Seal. She needed it. She was going low. I guess the only thing which would be better is if that veil went up for two turns. Like the veil going on for one turn, they kind of run through it and then yeah, they're a little bit weaker. But yeah, it's not going to be the quickest runs in the world. But he is throwing out a ton of damage. He's doing a lot of the work. And I think you just get the job done. I think he brings a massive, massive kind of stack of support to this type of team when you're up against these really tanky, annoying units. So, you know, this is where you start to get more benefit from the War Master hits rather than Helm Smasher. Because at this point, everyone's got such high HP and defense pools that, you know, you're better off just getting like the, the guaranteed damage away. But you see here, I mean, yeah, it looks slow. It's kind of dull. But, um, oh, Ninja's out of rest as well. I didn't see that. Who took him down? Faceless, I guess. But yeah, you're just kind of working your way through them. As long as you've got enough support in the team, then... I think you, you just kind of worked your way through it. One thing, as I'm just kind of cruising through this wave too, one thing I forgot to mention, two of this enemy here coming into him whilst everyone else was veiled, attack, freeze, attack, freeze. That extra layer of crowd control is worth way more than that reflect damage. Like tons more. It's way stronger. Reflect damage with that type of mechanic only really works on very high HP, low defense-based champions. It won't work on a defensive unit. It just can't he's mitigating too much of the damage himself but the extra chance to freeze an extra layer of control this will be where you do want the accuracy in the build anyway let's keep going so look there you go i mean it's not quick it's not but no seer people will know this no if you don't have seer it is a nightmare beating up this late level stuff on doom tower and he has bought a ton of work there so what's he done almost the same damage as ninja and ninja is full damage yeah, almost the same damage without bringing it burns. That's in, that's crazy, by the way. It's crazy. And basically, he's also bringing a ton of support for the team. So, look, I can't say it enough. This guy is, is the real deal. He is a great, great champion. Really, really good. In terms of Doom Tower bosses, Dark Fae, probably not his best spot. He doesn't bring a turn meter control. He does bring a block debuffs, which could be helpful, I guess. But Dark Fae really is about blowing up the ads, and then turn me to control. That's pretty much it. So he's not really bringing a lot to that fight. I think the Griffin he will bring plenty to in terms of, you know, the block debuffs placed at the right time, the increased defense placed at the right time, the decreased accuracy maybe if you're going more of like a resistance build. Certainly the big shield is going to help, but don't forget this dude can wipe all of that stuff away. Scarab boss... Not so much again. It's not really this rotation actually in particular is not really his rotation, I'd say. Other rotations he'd be better. Formal, I mean the decrease accuracy A1 is great if you're trying to do a resistance team. And I know a lot of people do for Bommel. So that's definitely an area that he could come in. Again, he does bring uh he's not bringing more debuffs to your team. So he's not going to be popping a load of extra bombs. He will bring the increased defense and block debuffs for you, but you have to place it at the right time. That is going to be a a manual fight rather than an auto um but as i say this rotation's not his best but he's still going to be strong in a lot of the doom tower content where i think he's going to come into his own and i'm going to do this as, as probably two separate videos honestly because it's, there's a lot more um team construction to do but clan boss he's going to be absolutely top tier and hydra i think he's going to be top tier as well he's one of the few champions in the game that can give a full team perfect um perfect veil which is massive. So I think both of these are going to be massive for 
I will do separate videos for these so you guys can kind of get a good feel for what he's capable of doing. But leave me a comment below. What do you think? If I can just stress it one more time, if it's me, the epics are pretty lackluster. A couple of the rares are interesting. This guy, though, I think makes a big difference to most accounts. I will 100% be getting this guy on my free to play if I can make it work. I've been Hell Hades. I will catch you later.